thank you for the invitation. I'm Jörg Niere from DSpace. Um, I'm working at DSpace since 2006 in the development department, uh, department of TargetLink, and uh, my group uh, is developing the main core of the code generator from TargetLink. Um, I assume most of you are not very familiar with TargetLink because you have all these models and Modelica models and Dynamics and so on um, in your heads, so I'll just start to say something. TargetLink. So TargetLink uh, will celebrate its 20th birthday next year. So we are uh, 20 years in industry used and um, if someone is driving a Mercedes-Benz from, let's say, up from 2010, um, I can guarantee that there will be some code generated from targeting inside this car. Oliver mentioned it in his talk uh, in the morning. Embedded systems are a, a little bit specific. You have limited resources. You have special requirements of the quality of the code because no one wants to drive on a, uh, on a motorway with 200 kilometers per hour and the system says, oh, sorry, I'm out of memory. And um, therefore, or before targeting, everything has been done manually. So you, the, the software developer got the model and you have to code it. Uh, very boring thing, especially when you think about fixed point arithmetics. Uh, and very, also very error proof. So targeting was developed and started um, on the base of uh, MATLAB and Simulink and uh, continued afterwards with state flow code generation. The code we are Generating is typically highly readable. We have um, specific requirements from our customers that variables look in the following name scheme or have access functions or whatever is needed for the environment of the concurrent, uh, of, of the actual embedded system. So targeting is a tool which is very, very highly configurable. You can nearly um, manipulate the code in that way you want to get it. The thing is, going di directly on the hardware is a little bit tricky, so we introduced this model in the loop, uh, software uh, processor in the loop, and the last thing is really that you run your code on your embedded device, in a, in, or in a real embedded device or a simulation uh, or simulator from, target, uh, from, from DSpace. We have several other tools, therefore, inside the target link code profiling analysis. We are able to generate AutoSAR code, uh, and that is also classic as well as adaptive AutoSAR. Target link is certificated, as you see here. Uh, the most important one uh, is the ISO 26262 for the automotive industry. Um, and what we also have is we have a very large ecosystem that comes with target link. So if you have a current tool chain or you want to set up a new tool chain or you want to exchange something in your tool chain, you can just pick one of these tools here and put it together with targeting. You have a little bit adapted, but these are all tools and that are, that are not all of the tools our customers use in their tool chains um, to have this model-based development approach. Targeting, as I said, is based on MATLAB Simulink. So you have these models here. And um, that's the thing that you get from, from Simulink. You have so-called so block diagrams. You can um, manipulate the parameters of the blocks and so on. And TargetLink um, has added this data dictionary where we store everything else. You cannot store at the blocks. Think about namespaces in C++. Nothing a model would care about. That you can specify there and many, many other things. Altogether, on the right side, there are some import and export features, and as you see here in the, in the right corner, FMI is supported, I think, five years or so, so FMI is not new for us, and also the AutoSAR um, description or the AutoSAR code generation is something that we were the first code generator as it comes up. In principle, or most of our customers are from the automotive industries, but we also have customers, uh, I think you some of you know these orange motor change saws uh, using to, to, to cut um, trees in the wood or even, uh, let's say, pressure, um, pressure controllers in, in, in planes. So it's a wide, very wide range of customers where targeting is used. So let's come to the EFMI support. The EFMI support is, I think, this is nearly the same you have seen to, uh, today 
a little, uh, many more times. So in the middle is you have an EFMU, you have this manifest there, you have the algorithm uh, in there. You took this EFMI container manager, um, take the tool set, put, uh, put it to, through the target link, and take the tool set again and manage the container. In that case that you get here, this production code, uh, in 32 and 64 bit or so in single and double precision. It's nearly the same as Christoph just showed you using the ESP. The target link tool set, um, how do you get it? Uh, first of all, you need a target link license. That's the first thing you, have, uh, you need. And if you have that, just send an email to our support or use the EFMI info uh, mail address. It will directly come to me and I will send you the tool set. The tool set is based on targeting 22.1, uh, so the last release, which is currently the official one. The new one for this year, uh, I have the release candidate 2 with me, but it's not um, published yet, but I think it will be summer, somewhere around November. The tool set comes as a zip file, very simple. Um, with most of the things, typically no one reads it. There's some disclaimers and Eulers and everything else, but I want to point you to something that is here in this license agreement, which says, please do not use it in production series. Use it everywhere you want, but this tool set is not completely tested. It is not developed um, by the original standard, so it is not certified, so you cannot use it in production series. If you want to use it, just get a contact. Um, then you have an installer, very simple, and then the tool set itself is just common language interface application, so it's just to say you need a bash or a, ba or a PowerShell or, a, uh, or something like that. So, okay, not very spectacular, but the first of all is you need your algorithm code and you need your, the manifest, put it through this garlic, uh, garlic importer, and what you get is uh, you get a, t uh, a target link model and a data dictionary, and on the other side, if you remember the slide before, we will take this manifest creator and get an input, the data dictionary, what we get out is the production code manifest, and then you can use the container manager to put it all together. So let's jump into the practice. So this is the example you have just seen on your uh, tutorial where you have this behavioral models and the, the um, production code from ESP, and uh, as I said, it's very spectacular, and we have automized all the tools. It's just running a batch file, and everything goes automatically. Um, but the, it is not automatically the whole step. We um, have two steps behind. What you see here is just extracting the algorithm code and prepare the, the target link model and the data dictionary. And now I'm just switching to MATLAB inside, and there you have this two different configurations for MATLAB. This is the one with the um, double precision implementation, so um, it's, it's double, and the sim single precision is a float implementation. And as I said, it is highly automatic, highly automated, and just start run. It will please ignore the messages. It just opens the model and generates the code. The model is not only very respect. Not very interesting because we are using an internal internal interface uh, for the code. Just have to wait a little bit because it's completely compiling. Okay, so the next time, what you see, what what has been done first is we generated the code, and that's the second time, uh, the second thing but, which is still running here now is that we generate the build environment. And that's, that is the thing Christoph mentioned where he said the, uh, the binary container will contain such an integration mode, let's say more or less a make file. And uh, yeah, it starts two times because it's single and double precision. It's just an implementation. And go ahead. Compilation is succeeded. Very good. And what we will get then is So what we will get then is this 
Where is it? Ah. I have to pro make the second step. So building the container and adding it to the container. So that's it. Okay, so now the scripts just grab the code, grab the manifest and put it into the into a new container. Okay, hopefully what what was success. And then there should be our new EFMU which has this production code from target link uh, in single and double precision version inside that. Next thing uh, is something that um, Christopher showed you in, on the last slides. Um, and uh, what we generated in combination is is that we directly generated an FMU inside the in our production code container. Where is it? Uh, okay. And if you look in this FMU, You see, there is this model description missing. So this one is pure EFMU. It's not an FMU. And what I, what I can do now is that I can just have to find the correct one. What I can do is I can extract the FMU which is contained in this container, uh, in this production code container, and place it written successfully, okay. Hope that worked. No. Because I had it open. That's the problem. And now you see there's this model description, the sources and the documentation. This is the content of the FMU which is inside the EFMU production code container, just placed to the, uh, to the outside. And if you look in this manifest, in this, I think it's here in the content. Um, I don't know which, one, which was open. So in this container itself, um, it's mentioned which FMU is, so to say, for the outside world. Uh, okay, that won't work. I have to extract. Okay, um, then let's let's go to the last part of the demo. Um, and therefore, what I'm doing now is I just open this model that has been generated by the tool set and just play a little bit around with that. So this is all the thing that has been produced by our garlic importer. And there is this model. And here's this model, it's ASLX. Ignore that, I always forget to save our data dictionary. Um, so this is the same I've done before, it's just generating code, or I just can say, okay, build the software in the loop model. And what I've done in this model here, which is different to the original one, is I added those values here from the behavior model. And he, this here is a difference, so I can see at the end if I'm plotting that, where, is there a difference in the, um, in the code which is, has been generated um, to the values. Compilation succeeded. Compiling. Generating. Can just say, okay, play. So, and you see flat line. So, no difference between the signals. And, and that's the thing because I generated the 64 bit code, or I used the 64 bit code. And what I can do now, you know, which is 
in, which is relatively simple. I just opened the data dictionary and change that to the single precision code. Generate it again. Compilation succeeded. So when I just, it, it looks like a flat line again, but what you see is there is a, a, a tolerance of 10 to the power of minus 4, so and this results from using single precision instead of double precision. Yeah. And if you have in mind that embedded systems typically do not have a floating point unit, and when they have a floating point unit, it's only 35, 32 bits, um, this can be very crucial. So the complete controller can be out of, can be out of control then, if you use that. Um, Christoph just showed something for you to say, okay, I need some tuning. Um, this is very simple in targeting. You just say, okay, generate an SAP2 file and use your own cal generating the SAP2 file and then you will hopefully find that here. And then just use your own calibration tool, read the A A2L file in, in, your, in your tool and use it as you want and for example I have to find here are this for example here are the addresses where to find for example the tunable parameter FC uh, F cut or something like that. So just use your own tool, load that A2L file into your um, into your tool and calibrate or recalibrate your own system. Okay. That is all I wanted to show to you. I know it's very or it's only a short um, overview of all the things targeting is able to. Um, for example, what I can show you is the following. For example, these are all the tunable parameters, for example, currently modeled as a struct. If you want own, uh, single values in that instead of a struct, just reconfigure this data dictionary and then just generate the code again and it will work. And the same holds for naming convention and something like that. Okay, then we can skip all that. Thanks for your attention. I hope you find it a little bit interesting and you're open, I'm open for questions. What you can do, or what you can, for example, what you also can do is you just take your source code, in, uh, which is generated, and put it here in the so-called custom code block. And if you have your own C code, just add it. It's no problem. The FMI part in the simulation part for the targets is, com is different. It's, com it's a completely different part. So we have fully tested the target part. What we have not fully tested is everything with EM EFMI, the tool set and the internal, uh, and the internal interface. I tried last week a NAC V800, which was not working um, because, it, because it was too limited and have no floating point unit. What I have with me is, for example, a Lauterbach sing, uh, instruction set simulator. Uh, so I can just um, hit the build button. So now the code is generated for the Lauterbach simulator. And uh, if, has, if, it, if it finishes, 
I hope I hope the simulator will be started. Yeah, it's a generic target link loader on the target. Sorry, I think I have to I have. To. So generic arm. Uh, Gener there's a generic arm target, I think. Yeah. Uh, if someone raises, find it. Raise your hand. Ah, no, that's the that's the that's the comp. Ah, Cortex M E Kyle. So let's try it right again. So when, when you buy it, the target simulation model from TargetLink, if we have it on the list, it's okay. Then you can just, just buy it. If we do not have it on the list, you can just ask for us for it. So we are typically developing it uh, per demand if, if you want it. And the thing is the target link loader on the, on the chip, on, on the target, is generic. So it's completely independent from the rest of target link. Okay, this is the instruction set simulator. So this instruction set simulator executes now this target link loader and will interpret uh, the simulation when the steps are required from target link. So and if you are on a on the processor and the loop simulation, you also get the stack size and typically also the execution time, but the Lauterbach uh, simulator doesn't support that, so that's the thing. <laughs> what you also can have is very easily when you have that, just say, okay, I want to see the code size of the binary which, is, which will be compiled. Then you get, so, um, there's this, I think, this do step method. Uh, you have seen from, from Christoph, this is the this do step method, 576 uh, bytes, and overall RAM usage, 124 ROM with and without libraries. So a complete, uh, complete report of the code size. And he, to that time, when you generate that one, you haven't connected your target. But you can check if, if um, it's real time compatible, if the time slot is uh, sufficient. Okay. Then you, therefore you have to execute it. Then, thank you very much for your attention and I will hand over to Christoph again.